a neuroscientist, and as my wonderful student said, we're all fascinated by this amazing computer in our heads, our brains. Our brains and their circuits are the reason why we can do everything we do. We can think, we can feel, we can talk, we can plan, we can remember. Our brains, though, face a huge challenge compared to regular computers. Because our brains have to be grown in the embryo. When we were all embryos, we faced this challenge. We had to construct our brains. Would that we could construct them like computers. Would that we could go and buy parts, you know, motherboards and chips and wire them up and so on. But every single component of our brain has to be produced, has to be generated in the embryo. And then the wires have to be grown to connect the right part to the right part. Otherwise, the brain won't function. Our circuits are why our brains function. And we're going to test our circuits using this little tube that you just made. I'm not going to play the clarinet with it, okay? Utni okat nahi hai meri. But hold the tube in one hand. Your other hand will be in two positions, okay? Position one and two. Don't block the tube, okay? It's just on the side one and two. Now keep your hand in position one and keep both eyes open and just lift. Look through the tube with one eye, but keep the other eye open. Yeah, position one. And now, do you see me? Do you see me? Now go to position two. And what do you see? What do you see? Okay, what was in the coffee? People are saying there's a hole in their hands. Can it be? Can it really be that there's a hole in your hand? But you see it. Okay, friends, we don't have a choice. The circuitry makes it so. Yeah, it's kind of funny. You can kind of make the whole travel down. <laughs> the circuitry makes it so. What do I mean by that? The nerves from the two eyes convey our signals to the brain, so overlap the images. This overlap is crucial for us to perceive the world in depth. This circuitry is what those 3D movie glasses take advantage of when you see movies in 3D. Okay, we have those circuits. You would think that such an important circuit would be fixed, unchangeable, hardwired. But no. The amazing thing is this circuitry for depth perception is actually grown in the brain when we open our eyes and see the 3D world. Isn't that fantastic? that the brain wires itself based on its experience of the world, visual experience in this case. When we see the world in 3D, these circuits wire up to give us this overlap so that we can navigate the world. That's just how marvelous this brain is. It's able to wire itself up based on its experience. And what we experience and perceive, we learn from. And what we learn from, we remember. And I have the privilege of working on the memory machine in the brain, the hippocampus, not the hippopotamus. Okay, that's different. <laughs> I work on the hippocampus. It's the structure that we use to learn and to record our memories. Now, the hippocampus is special because it's one of the few places in the brain where new neurons are made throughout life, new gray cells are added through to the hippocampus throughout life. And right now, right now in the audience, tick, 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 there's new neurons being added to your brains. Yes. But not everybody gets the same number of new neurons. Look at this mouse. It's in a standard cage, okay? Kind of boring life. And look at its friends here in an enriched cage. Interesting environment, toys to play with, and so on. This mouse? get some neurons added to its hippocampus daily. But these mice get more neurons. They not only get more neurons, those neurons have more connections, more sprouts. So you can see how the environment, the experience of the environment, shapes how the brain is actually built, how it builds itself, how it wires itself. Now, my wonderful team of students and postdocs discovered a gene switch which allows us to make extra neurons in the mouse hippocampus. How did we even find such a thing? Well, we learned from the embryo. In the embryo, the hippocampus has stem cells, brain stem cells. This gene that we're looking at, the brain stem cells have this gene turned on initially, and then this gene makes those stem cells produce neurons. And when enough neurons are produced, this gene gets turned off, 
and the brain stem cells now produce a type of support cell that nourishes and protects the neurons. Isn't it cool that a single stem cell can produce two completely different types, the neuron and the support cell? Well, what we discovered is that if you keep this gene permanently on, then you get to produce neuron after neuron after neuron. You don't produce support cells. Now, we don't do that in all the brain stem cells because you do need support cells, but only a few. Here's what it looks like. Okay, here's a piece of the mouse hippocampus without the new extra neurons added. And here's what it looks like with the extra neurons and all those green little dots, these trees. Here, look at them in HiMag. Don't they look fabulous? Okay, each green is a tree of, this is one neuron with its arbors, with its connections. Look how beautifully they're connected. We're on the verge of testing whether adding these extra neurons to the hippocampus allows them to participate in memory formation better. We're on the verge of doing this experiment. So this is a wonderful time for me to communicate the exciting process of science. Science is not a closed thing, the package that lives in textbooks, a product that sits on shelves that you, you know, acquire. Science is an ongoing process of discovery. It's as if yesterday we discovered what this gene does, today we used it to put extra neurons in the hippocampus, and tomorrow we're going to test how these neurons participate in memories. Now, how does it really help us to study neurons and connections? Well, because these neurons and connections give us all our abilities. And if there's one thing that's absolutely true in neuroscience, in the four circuits, it's use it or lose it. Unused circuits shrivel away. And stimulated circuits expand, make connections, take us in new directions. If you want your brain to grow, take it into challenging spaces. Every difficult task, every tough assignment, every impossible skill that you try and master allows your brain to grow and changes your circuits, because remember, circuits respond to experience. Let me give you a sense of how neurons grow, how they actually look when they're growing. This is a hippocampal neuron in a tissue culture dish, and it's alive. Boy, is it alive. Take a look. Look at all its tendrils. Look at them seeking the environment. Look at them tasting, sampling, grow here, grow there. At one point, one of these tendrils says, hey, I'm going to be the output wire, all you guys be input wires. So these input guys are sampling their environment to see who they can take input from, and this output wire is saying, I'm going to grow there, I'm going to grow there, there's something for me to connect to. I want to connect in that direction, I see something there, I want to make a thought. This is the circuitry of memory. This is the circuitry of thought. This is the circuitry of emotion. This is happening in our brains. Think about it, we have thousands of neurons in our heads. And look at how many thousands of people there are. Look at this amazing, fantastic neural network, growing, connecting, sprouting tendrils, making new ideas. This is what our brains were meant to do. I'd like to close with planting a thought that is very special to my heart. If our brains respond to the environment and experience and make new connections, if our brains allow us to learn new skills and respond to challenges. Can we not shape our circuits so that we evolve into better human beings? Random acts of kindness, helping someone in need. If we challenge ourselves with things we may not usually do, we will grow, our circuits will grow, with it we will grow, with it our society will grow. Because what is society but many, many brains all working together? Let us then take this neuroscience approach to society. Let's shape our circuits so that we can make our society more accepting, more inclusive, more tolerant. Grow circuits for society, folks. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>